Hey guys, it's Stark here, and today I want to go over something that is a big pet peeve of mine that I see all the time uh, with people who comp in After Effects, and it's their Z-Depth being incorrect. Now, I don't blame them because, as you'll see in this tutorial, it's kind of like, how would you sort of figure this out if you didn't know about it? But this has to do especially with 100% with CG compositing. So I have this EXR just from a thing I did like a month ago, and if you don't have this program or uh, plugin, sorry, create Pro XR layer comps, just go ahead and search for it. And there's a form of it. It either comes with it now in After Effects or not. I can't remember because it's just a habit to always have it installed. So uh, what I'm going to do is, first of all, make sure we are in 32 bits, sRGB, linear, and things will be good because this is a dense color guy. Has lots of color data. Now, here it is. OK, it's nothing crazy. And I am going to just drop this down. And then you have our Z depth. And then I'm going to point out what probably most people do, which is turn this off. They come in and they're like, all right, um, we just need camera lens boy, right? OK. And I'm going to go to Pentagon because I like that shape. And then usually. Turn it up to like, I don't know, just a 10. I don't know why I'm saying usually, I don't know. They turn it up to whatever they want, but then they go down to the Z source. There it is. And then they start going and you're gonna to start to see something which is the blur as you turn it up. Now this is too blurry even for whatever the situation was because you were gonna go this blurry, you might as well just blur the entire thing and not actually use a, a source map. So you do that instead. But if you went up the field, you're going to notice a few things, which is that, first of all, we have this hole in there. And I'm going to turn it off. And that's just, you're just seeing through the other side of the mouth, right? And then you see that it's blurring. It's starting to eat away in the edge of this. So if we go into the Z source here, you have all this nice stuff. And the other thing we want to do is take our alpha, and this is extractors definitely in uh, After Effects. Uh, and this, uh, this is how the Pro VXR thing works. The Pro VXR just automates it. But we're going to steal our alpha channel from our other alpha channel. So now we have it, all right? Now let's go in here. And it should help a little bit, or not at all. It kind of helps. Well, not really. But let me point something out here. The way that Z-Depth works, if you're not familiar with CG, is that the darker, well, typically, unless you invert it, but it's just like fog. Like, the less you see, the farther back you go. So the darker the image, if you look up here, the darker the, or the lower the numbers, right, the farther away it is, OK? Now, this may look incorrect to you how it has these jagged edges like this, how they're solid, and they're not uh, anti-aliased. And there's a reason for that. So if I turn this off, do you remember what I just said, that dark colors are far away, OK, while light colors aren't, they're closer. If we go back to our guy here, you get this other problem where it doesn't know how to interpret it. So let me just lock it. And this by no means is going to fix it, but you know, it's good to show you like how it works. So we'll go in and then we will let's make sure there's that. And then we'll just turn on unmalt. And you'll see that it it like extends it. It kind of helps, but they're solid, right? So that's fine. I mean, it's not a big deal. But mostly up here, you're going to see the or it's this weird issue and we don't want that so we're going to turn this on and that is correct just want you to know that this is correct now after effects doesn't really have a good tool to really solve this which is really odd because they have this z depth camera blur right and in uh, nuke or other stuff you could extend the color range of this so that we could actually do that and i had to find a way to kind of just do it and i actually Settled on uh, the refine hard mat. Now, 
I'm going to stack this. You're not going to see much uh, the first go around here. Um, I have my numbers written down just because each case is going to be different. But I think something in general with these two uh, will help you out. I found this out by just seeing what happened when I duplicated because I saw that the edge was extending and then I kind of went back and forth and dialed it in. And especially with this tooth guy in this situation or the hole right here, it kind of made it to where I, you know, I had to tweak it a lot. So I'm just going to turn these guys down to zero, zero. I want this guy. I think I had it like 87 shift edge to 100. And again, you're not going to see much decontaminate edge colors is good and then this will actually we'll come back to this because this is going to be one that really fixes it as we well let me go back <laughs> let's turn this up okay so let's turn this guy up and you'll start seeing the edges extending out turn the contrast to 100 shatter to 100 uncheck use motion blur Turn this guy down. Because again, we're just extending out the edge and then turn this guy up to like 30. It's probably easier if I just did 30. Now, as you can already see, is our blur looks way better. And again, like I said, it doesn't fix the entire problem. And also, I, you. <laughs> At this point, it's not even depth of field, right? So let's just mess with this. I want to get that. I don't want that, but hold on. There's more. What's cool is we will just duplicate this layer. OK, we're going to delete this guy. And now because it's extended and it's just on top. And now we have this unmultiplied unchecked. We have the pristine one on top. OK, so we're not going to lose detail on that tooth. So the thing I could say about where was it? Let's do 65, I think I said. We could bring that up. So now we have this fixed. OK, now we'll go back up to the RGB source and we're going to shift it. And you'll still see again, you're going to get a little haloing because this isn't really the it's not the proper way to do it, but trying to get the eye and you can see that up there you'll get some artifacts but first of all let's also bring this down to like maybe 15. Let me close the sound full screen it because I don't I want to get rid of that. So there we go and keep in mind too in your render this is going to help because I, I mean, I also sort of set the focal distance so that this part is blurrier. So if we turn this off, see it's sharper. Cool, but there you go. Uh, let me do, let's shift it. See, as you bring it forward, nothing. Nothing, look at that beautiful depth of field. And it's correct just by extending the edge. You should do this always. Always, always, always do it this way. Do not just do, in fact, let's do a side by side. Not that haloing thing that I'm sure eight trillion of you have run into. So now you know how to fix it. So you guys can follow me at MStark TV. You could subscribe and like the video and spread it around to all your compositing buddies. So thanks, guys.